since all of the electrochem reactions that we're going to be looking at involve redox reactions, just wanted to take a couple minutes to review how you do a redox reaction, how you balance that. So you might remember from doing this earlier in the year that you could balance the reaction in an acidic solution or in a basic solution. So we're going to start by reviewing how we balance those redox reactions if they were balanced in an acid. So your first step is to take that reaction and break it up into two half reactions, one for oxidation, one for reduction. So if you look at the iron on the left, it has a charge of plus two. The iron on the right has a charge of plus three. And so that means during the course of the reaction that iron loses an electron somehow. Leo, lose electron oxidation. So where does that electron go? It has to, you can't just make it vanish. It must be going to the permanganate somehow to make that permanganate ion turn into a manganese plus two ion. Our next step, once you've broken it into two half reactions, is to balance for mass. So first, make sure that you balance anything that's not a hydrogen or oxygen. So if you have any element that's not hydrogen or oxygen in your reaction, you would balance it just like any other uh, balanced chemical equation that you've written for years now. Uh, but if you have a oxygen or hydrogen to balance, those require some extra steps. So usually when you look at the reactions, one side often has too many oxygen atoms. What we're going to do to correct this is to add water molecules to the oxygen deficient side. So if you look at our iron, it goes from iron plus two to iron plus three. Mass wise, it's already balanced. You have one iron on the left, one iron on the right. That guy's good. It's our reduction reaction that we have to worry about for balancing for mass because the uh, the reactant side has four oxygen atoms and the right hand side does not have any oxygen atoms. So we need to balance those O's and we can do so by adding water to the oxygen deficient side. So since our, we have four oxygens on the left, if we add four water molecules to the right hand side, that's our way of balancing our O's. So now our right hand side has four O's as well. But by adding water, we've added some hydrogen ions into solution as well. So now our right-hand side has eight H's, and our left-hand side does not have any. So our next step is that we have to balance our H's. And we can do that by adding hydrogen ions. This is possible because we're balancing it in an acidic solution. So there's going to be hydrogen ions floating around. I'm going to add eight H's to that left hand side and now if you look mass wise everything balances mass wise we have eight hydrogens on the left eight hydrogens on the right one manganese on the left one manganese on the right four oxygens on the left four oxygens on the right so mass wise now everything is good our next step is to balance for charge by adding electrons to the more positive side so when we look at our oxidation reaction there, the iron on the right is more positive than the iron on the left. We're going to bring down that charge on the right-hand side to make it match the charge on the left-hand side by adding an electron to the right-hand side. So now we have that plus three iron with one electron. It'll bring down that overall charge on the right-hand side to plus two to match the iron on the left. When we look at our reduction reaction, right now we have eight positive hydrogen ions and a permanganate ion with a charge of minus one. So the left-hand side has a net charge right now of positive seven. The right-hand side you have the manganese plus two and neutral water. So we have plus seven on the left, plus two on the right. We need to bring down the charge on the left-hand side to make it match the charge on the right-hand side. That means we'd have to add five electrons to the left-hand side. Now we have to multiply each half reaction by a factor so that the number of electrons match. Because they're not different electrons, the reactions that electrons that are being lost in the oxidation re reaction are the ones that the reduction 
reaction is gaining. Remember, it's a transfer of electrons, so you can't lose one and gain five. That doesn't make sense. So we're going to multiply that top reaction by five to make the number of electrons match the number of electrons in the reduction reaction. So now, by that multiplication of five, our iron is losing five electrons, and then those five electrons are being gained by our permanganate. Now we can add the two half reactions together. So if we do so, our electrons would cancel out. Here is our net overall reaction of what's left. And so we said before it's balanced for mass already, and now we can do a quick double check to make sure that it's also balanced for charge. So we have the plus 8 from the hydrogen ions, the minus 1 from the permanganate, and then 5 plus 2s from the iron. So plus 8, minus 1, plus 10. That's a positive 17 on the left. On the right hand side we have 5 plus 3s, so that's positive 15. Our manganese is a plus 2, and then neutral water. So it's also positive 17. So we're balanced for both mass and charge. There's our overall reaction. But what if you wanted to balance your reactions in a base? What if it had said in the beginning that we were balancing that same exact reaction, but in a basic solution? Uh, steps 1 through 5 are going to stay the same. The problem is you wouldn't have any free-floating hydrogens available in a basic solution, so you can't have any H pluses uh, left over in your net reaction if it's being balanced in a base. So what you would do is neutralize each of these hydrogen ions with some hydroxide of ions, which would be available in a basic solution. And then you want to make sure that you repeat that process for both sides and simplify. So let's say that that reaction from the previous slide had been balanced in a base. So we take that original reaction right there, and we'd say, oh, there, there wouldn't be any hydrogen ions floating around in a base. I need to neutralize those with some hydroxide ions that would be available. So I'm going to add eight hydroxide ions to the left. Well, you can't add eight hydroxide ions to the left without also doing it to the right because that reaction as is was already balanced for mass and charge, and now you've just disrupted that. So as long as you add the same exact thing to the right-hand side, you're still balanced for mass and charge. Well, those eight hydroxide and eight hydrogen ions on the left-hand side will come together to make eight water molecules. Now. We can simplify because we have eight water molecules on the left, four water molecules on the right, and so we're let, left with a net of four water molecules on the left-hand side and all the water molecules on the right drop out. So there would be your balanced reaction if it had been balanced in a base.